Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of Marketing Against the Grain, your show for marketing-minded people everywhere. I'm your co-host, Kit Bodner, and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Kieran Flanagan, from the other side of the world, and we have an emergency podcast today. I can't stand it. I've never, ever, Kieran, needed to do a podcast more than this podcast right now. We are at the... uh dawn of a new internet after the yes. announcements from microsoft oh. and google and we 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 can actually uh t- there's just so many things to talk about inclusive uh, including like the product marketing team at google which we have to get into oh <laughs> we're gonna talk about google's <laughs> product marketing sorry to the google product marketing team. okay but to be super clear microsoft made some huge announcements around ai and bing search on tuesday of this week and then on wednesday google made some big announcements to their ai search that they're calling bard we're going to talk all about it we have more takes than i think we ever have before i think kieran and i set a whatsapp record i'm surprised we didn't break whatsapp yesterday with how many <laughs> like how much we were going back and forth and just like sending quotes to each other but this is the first time that we have talked live we did some whatsapping but that's it we have not talked live since all of this went down i have i have a beverage like that's how emergency this is i have a cocktail in hand oh, because cocktail i'm i'm Damn like it. this needs to happen you just have like water over there i have water i have water well, born water i'm trying to recuperate from i was in austin last week okay i don't even know where to start man can like, i do my can i do my opener yeah yeah like i have a good opener i have a good opener like, amount of things to say all right so we have the you know the the AI the AI wars. We can get into like uh, Microsoft yes. how they're just first shots it. fired. We have, we have the Google Bard release today. So I kept I want to talk to you about the Frogfish. <laughs> what? Okay. This is my, go. Like, go. All right. So the Frogfish is this incredible fish, and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and then wherever it lands, it kind of mimics its like surroundings, right? Yeah. And the Frogfish. It kind of just sits there. It sits, it sits, it does nothing, it does nothing, it waits, it waits, it waits. And it, oh, lull- I going. And it lulls its prey into like this safe space and then it just devours them. And this is Microsoft Bing to Google, right? Bing has been stagnating <laughs> yes. for years, doing nothing, lying there in the pool of dead search engines, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing. And the reason this is really great for Microsoft is because they have done nothing. Bing is only 5% yeah. of their overall revenue. AdWords is 81% of Google's revenue. And now they're like waking up and they are going to devour Google by changing the way that you think search should be monetized. That is my hot take to start the show. So first of all, for, for people listening, Satya Nadella is the CEO of Microsoft. And he, this week, just like pulled the ultimate like mob boss character Total from a boss. movie move. He was like, oh, Google has this big AI search announcement. I'm going to front run it. I'm going to do the day before. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to totally go after them. And one of the reasons, you know why this is so like so impressive, Kieran, is do you know what Satya's job was for Steve Ballmer when Steve Ballmer was the, the CEO of Microsoft? No. Was he a software engineer? He ran Bing. Oh, he rang Vin. He, he? Has oh my been god! How did he this? Wait a minute. Yes, I, that's yes. My, oh, he oh went from Bing. Yes, Bing. Bing. <laughs> to CEO he was the head of Microsoft. Of Bing. He was oh, the wow. head of Bing. That is he a was career trajectory. Bing for Microsoft was one of the jobs Steve Ballmer asked. Oh, dude, he's been Steve holding Ballmer a grudge you. all this time. This whole time. This it's whole like time. Do not cross grudge. him. He's like that guy who just like, <laughs> oh, you said that thing to me. You just wait. I will never I, forget. I, I, and I in your never sleep five years from now, you will be done. <laughs> oh my God. That's, you, that is, what a story. Isn't that incredible? This, this is a movie. This is actually and, a movie. Well, and why it's so incredible, and, and, and let's and for everybody watching, why it's so incredible is that I imagine when he was running Bing, he probably realized, hey, I'm never going to compete with Google in this traditional search world. So the only time I'm going to be actually able to disrupt Google is when a new technology paradigm shifts. And so what does he do? Five years ago, he backs Sam Altman in OpenAI and basically gives them whatever they need so that because he knew that if he could differentiate on ai and win in the next ai powered generation of search that's the only chance he had to disrupt google and he was right it was it's it's incredible to see somebody with like a decade long plan just kind of buy time one of the things i would remind everybody watching is like this is the perfect lesson in greatness takes patience it's like yes. he had a strategy, he was high conviction, and he just stuck to it. Didn't matter what people said, 
Didn't matter what the doubt that was in his head. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna. I know what I know what I need to do. I'm gonna do it. And Kieran, it was incredible. So let's talk a little bit about what Microsoft announced and break that down a little bit. And we'll talk about Google announced. Then we're gonna talk about all the implications of all that. So give give everybody your summary of the Microsoft announcements. So basically, they announced AI features going to be free. They were going to mm-hmm. integrate it in chat. People wouldn't have to pay for that. The other thing that they did, which was again. They really taught Google a lesson, and we can get into kind of Google's launch. They just released a version to the public. I think it's still yes. in wait lists, but a lot of people can get access. Chat is fully integrated into search. You can use it, but it's still they're still going to send traffic to publishers through the blue link. So it's like, it's, it is exactly, I actually tweeted months ago that I bet you they end up in some version of this, this search engine called you.com, Y-O-U.com. And it's a blended AI and search experience and it's clunky, but when you actually kind of step back and think about how could you possibly integrate chat to search, there's not that many ways to do it. And so I think in Microsoft, they're going to have an extended box where you can ask the things questions. They have a separate tab, I think for chat, which I noticed because I was trying to get access and play around. There are some other things that I can kind of come back to. They had some announcements in terms of like LLM models. They're using the large language models that I thought were pretty interesting. The other thing that he said in the announcement was that 40% of people click on links and then click back. So there's a ton of people who I suspect will use this that are not finding what they want because like they're instantly clicking back on the thing that they want. And then he also they also said that the accuracy is getting much, much better. And I think my question would be, and you can tell me what you think about the Microsoft announcements, but the question I have kept like with me is, why would anyone use the blue links? The, I think the blue links are gonna look archaic to the average user who uses chat and when the information becomes much, much better. But I would also posit that the people using the chat are not validating the answers. Like Microsoft said, oh, well, leave the blue links there so you can validate the answers. People are lazy. People want the easy thing. I think they're just going to accept what the chat thing tells them. I generally agree. So, so, so I have a few takes. I recorded a podcast last week, Kieran, while you were traveling with our good friend Megan Anderson. And I made the following analogy that you've not heard yet because the pod's not been out. I've decided that, you know what AI is, Kieran? Have you, have you watched the movie Almost Famous? Oh, you know the movie Almost Famous? remind me because I think I have watched it. It's weird, like, there's a young teenage, like, rock journalist who goes on tour with these bands and covers I them. haven't watched it. I haven't watched okay. it. Okay. Well, there's, this, a but scene, I know the there's a scene in that movie where one of the rock stars does drugs, and he's standing on top of this house, and he's like, I am a golden god, and he jumps into a swimming pool. And it's like the ultimate, like, I, irrational confidence ego thing. And that's what AI is. AI could have the worst answer <laughs> possible. And it's like, this is the right answer. This is the right answer. You're going you're gonna to believe that answer. And so that's the misinformation problem of AI. I like to say that AI is like a Stanford engineer turned founder where they know all of the answers in the room, but the majority of them are probably wrong. Uh, no, no offense to like, Tech inside joke there. But it, it, in, in, all, in all seriousness, I think misinformation is, is a problem with AI because of that irrational conference, and that's why those blue links are there. I'm with you that the blue links are going to look archaic. I actually completely, completely agree. That was a great rundown. The other thing they did is they have integrated chat GPT into Bing Travel so that it can help you plan mm, your trips, yep. which is a yep. really, really interesting use case there. The other thing is that they are front running, meaning they are using a more advanced model of chat GPT than the current public chat GPT model that is out there and available. And so I imagine that's part of their deal with OpenAI is that they're getting some first right model access, which is a pretty big deal as those models get better and better and better. Here, I can tell you, I want to tell you something. The most important thing of that Microsoft announcement was what was not in the announcement. All right. I repeat that again. The most important thing of that Microsoft announcement was what was not in that announcement. I read the official post from Microsoft. I know what it is. I know what you're I said it to you. I, went, I, I read that sucker like it was like a legal contract. Every, every word. There's nothing in there about how they're going to make money off of this. This is my frogfish analogy. It That's why I use the frogfish. Genius. They do not care about making they money. They don't care. All they are they trying to, to do is disrupt Google and right. take market share. They're like, right. cool, this is a small search right now is such a small part of our revenue that we can just go on not making money and even losing some money in our search business to just gain market share. And, and they're making this decision 
from a strategic perspective to go and take market share from Google, and it is genius. And Microsoft's crushing, their stock's crushing, Google stock is down after the news today. It's working. It's not like they got penalized financially for doing this. It is all working for them in a way that like, kind of blows my mind a little bit. Okay, so there's four different places. I want to give you the four places we could go, and then you can you can choose. But <laughs> it's like a choose your own adventure podcast yeah, I, today. We can go straight to the Google Nights, which we might want to do because you mentioned. Yeah, the stock we, I price. think we need to. Um, I, th- I think we need to. Then there's a quick poll I want to do with you. Then we want to talk about the incentives because the thing we really want to talk about is the incentives, and that has come up time again for me when I posted about this. Is like all of this is changing the incentives with publishers, which I think is a really interesting Mm -hmm. thing. But may we go to the Google announcement? Because you mentioned, hey, Microsoft crushing it. The Google stock fell $100 billion billion today. $100 billion today. We lost $100 billion of market cap. I can't imagine that. What is the date? February the 8th. So people have context. That's when we record this. And so... The stock, Microsoft built anticipation for the Google announcement because people were like, wow, Microsoft, which is usually playing second fiddle to Google, like as the butt of all the Google jokes, is like, oh, their announcement was pretty good. The Google one is going to be killer. And every time I have posted about like the AI wars, people are like, wait till you see what Google, Google has been sitting on. Incredible stuff. Incre- where do you see their announcement? Yep. And then they came out and they did the biggest fluff of a live <sighs> event. And it was, it was so tough. It was tough. bad. It's like a company that's got so lazy. They advertised, they did a GIF video with Bard and <laughs> showed you a question being asked of Bard. And the information was wrong. How do you do that on your big launch moment? How do you get the information wrong? And that's why the stock dropped. Yeah. It dropped for Google, went up for Microsoft, because people are like, this is a company that has gotten lazy, right? This is a company that has rested yeah. on its market dominant position. And are they really ready for this battle? Yeah, Google lost eight, over 8% of their market capitalization today in the in this change. And, you know, I think we all thought Google was going to come out with something awesome. I was actually super positive and bullish coming in I was super this. bullish I, I was I was too and so the the biggest surprise of the last 36 hours is that is that Google didn't deliver to what I thought the expectations were first of all what was genius is Microsoft had to have known this because you don't go first unless unless you know you have the better news right like Google set up their event today and then Microsoft set up their event in advance of that, right? Like, they, they did this all intentionally, right? Like, if you look at the interviews and everything, it is 100% intentional from a strategy perspective. And Mike, so Microsoft had to have known on some level that they weren't going to crush it, that they weren't going to, like, knock this announcement out. They didn't have the product to come out and take to market. And it's not that BARD is a bad product. It is just wildly under the expectations that we had for a company that had seemingly unlimited resources and have been working and investing in AI models for years and years and years, right? But they fluffed the, even if Bard, it is, they just fluffed the actual product announcement because mm-hmm. the video they used had an example with incorrect information. Like how do you, how do you make such a base? This is, this is your moment to preview what the chatbot can do and the information it fed back was like obviously wrong like people pointed it out and so i think it's high expectations for the product and the product if you look at it it's not that dissimilar from like google's chatbot right like yeah but but i think the expectations for the market leader are higher than the challenger and you're like oh like the product's not very like it's products pretty much we've seen this there's nothing new in this and wow you can't even get the announcement Right, and I think that is actually made people rethink: Are Google really uh, ready for the battle that's coming? Well, look, I really do feel bad for the product marketing team at Google who was doing this and, and made those mistakes. Like that is a tough place to be in. I'm actually going to challenge a different part of this that nobody's talking about, Karen. Which is, I'm, I'm a long-term believer in Google's business, but. I'm starting to look at that business as a YouTube first business than it more than it is like a search first business as it historically has been. And one of my issues with that is what happened in that announcement today was that they spent a lot of time talking about maps and search in maps. It's like they'd almost like conceded some of that core search mm. ground. Mm. Like if you're going to come out, like this is a lesson for all of us marketers. If you've got this big, 
challenger coming after you, you can't come out with this big diffused message of like, oh, we've got this cool chat thing, but we also have this great map search. It's like, no, that whole <laughs> event has to be about your core problem, right? The core search business. That should have been the whole discussion, nothing else. They could have done other announcements around around the other things that they cover today. The whole thing should have been around the core Google search experience. And to your point, like what you said in the Microsoft example, Microsoft put that out for people to use right away, and Google didn't. And that was another right. big, big challenge between these two announcements. Yeah, that maybe that's the worrying part is like Google are like, hey, I know Microsoft and we have this search business and it's awesome, but like we still have maps. So, you know, don't lose faith. <laughs> right. Well, uh, it, it, YouTube, it, it, is, YouTube is actually only te- like, I actually think that's a really good take is YouTube is much more defensible right now, but uh, it's 10% of their revenue. I know that's, that's the problem is AdWords is such a big part. It's, this is a cla- for everybody watching. This is a classic case of what's called the innovator's dilemma, where you are the leader. You have a proven business model that generates a lot of money for you. And you can't disrupt that business model with a new technology or it'll kill your core business. So somebody else comes along with new technology that disrupts that business model for you. And that is what's happening. It seems to be happening in the very early innings of search. I think Google could still turn around. I really do. But in this kind of very initial phase of it, like Microsoft has had a really strong step forward. Like I tweeted, I tweeted yesterday, Kieran. and I was like, if you had told 10 years ago me that it'd be hanging on every word of a Microsoft <laughs> announcement <laughs> I and saw not that caring actually. at all what Apple yeah, yeah. had to say, I would have thought yeah. that you were a complete yeah. idiot. And turns out I was the idiot because well, you like, have, that is it, exactly what's happening. It, 10 years ago, you were like, oh, you're going to be so excited in 10 year times for Bing's new search <laughs> announcements. Exactly. You were like, I would have been what? like, what are you talking what are you about? Talking? What is, you what's are a Bing? crazy person. Yeah. And no, that's, that is what's happening right now. So, yeah. so that's a little bit of a summary on, on, on the Google announcements. I, want, I, I hope that we did a good job for everybody watching who hasn't like done the deep dive into those two announcements, both Microsoft and Google. Now I think what we have to do, Kieran, is you had a couple other points. We want to talk about what it all means now. Right, what it so all means. So let's, let's, um, let's go there. So we can start with the, I want to do this and then get into what it means because it's a good caveat into that. Yeah. Um, and so there was a poll that you tweeted me and yeah, you said like, this is like, I, yeah, there was a, it's crazy. It's super interesting poll that someone on Twitter. Uh, actually, that guy's really famous, right? He's like yeah, the guy he's who does a, the, a famous Twitter guy. He has got like six million followers. He does followers. the Apple announcements and um, he had 322,000 people responded to this responded poll. Responded to this. Huge you, sample size. Would you use Google as it is or Bing with ChatGPT? And it was basically neck and neck. And you and you yes. were like, wow, like I can't believe this is neck and neck. And I, I was saying like, I actually think the right question to ask is, would you use Google actually with chat, like assume it gets chat, Bing with chat, or just chat alone? That's actually the more interesting question because how many people gravitate just towards, I'll just use the chat thing, right? I don't want to have the blue links thing. And the reason I start the conversation with that is, that kills the open web as we know it, right? Because like, yeah. how has the internet grew? Well, there's this been, there's this been, you can call it an uneasy relationship, but it's a relationship between aggregators like Google and content mm-hmm. publishers. You give us your content, we give you some organic traffic, we let you put ads there, we let you drive traffic through, through ads. I think Google, to your point, can catch up on the chat experience, but I just really do not think the chat experience lends itself to the same ad monetization model. It doesn't, it doesn't. And so then we're in this place where the incentives get destroyed and so the open web is under threat and i think that's an even like bigger discussion point is like well where's this all leading and i think that is the very first thing that people are trying to work out is well we have content we have search we have paid advertising all of these things are dependent upon that relationship between publishers and aggregators and if that relationship gets broken we're in a very different space we, we've said for a few months now that this, this change in AI is akin to like iOS or the internet, somewhere in there to like the level of change of how people use it. It's not just like this tech platform. It is a fundamental you know, step function change in how we use the internet. And that's starting to come to bear in a really interesting way. Like if you're a marketer, how you generate demand is, and leads and interest for your business is gonna change dramatically. And dramatically. one of the reasons we know this is because Google is already trying to shift metrics away I, from direct gonna, conversions yes, I'm so glad you brought this up, to yeah. influence. This is what's happening. Look at, and, and I think it's the right thing to do for Google. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. But that tells you, that right there tells you that they know that the internet is changing. 
Yes. Them and Facebook. Marketers' lives are changing. Tell, tell people a little bit more about what that change actually means, Karen. Yeah, so there's been some news released, and I actually saw, I can't, I, if I could recall this person's name, I would say it because I want to give them credit, but there was a really good article that said that Facebook and Google are trying to push people away from thinking about the return on paid advertising in terms of direct terms. Like, I put mm-hmm. a dollar in, I get $3 out, and I can measure that very easily through the AdWords or the Facebook ads. And really the reason AdWords is the greatest business model ever invented is because of that cash yes. machine, right? You put a dollar in, you get some amount of dollars out. The relationship between that is very, very clear. The problem I think, and the way Google are probably gonna to start to try to solve the impact chat has on AdWords is what will happen is your ad will get shown, but it will not get clicked on. And you can see this in feature snippets, right? Let's, mm-hmm. let's assume that Really what chat is, is an evolution of Google's feature snippets, but it's just a much better version because it gives you all of the answers within that page. Now, the reason feature snippets was great for Google is because it kept you on the page of Google consuming that content. It gives you the answer in the little box. You consume that, but you can still see the ads around that. The problem with chat is actually, it does not lend itself to you looking at anything else because you're just engaging with, it seems like you're engaging with another person. And like actually a really good example of a company who tried to monetize chat was WhatsApp. I don't, you might, you may not have got that because WhatsApp's much bigger in Europe, but they put AdWord like model within WhatsApp and literally no one ever clicked on those ads. It never worked. It never worked. And so when feature snippets was added to Google, it reduced the organic click through rate by 20%. I'll say that again for the listeners. When they added in feature snippets, 20% less clicks went to the organic listings. I would say that the. Oh, it's going to kill. Chat is like a 10x, 100x version of feature snippets. So it's going to kill the AdWords model. And so I think that the the thing that Google are going to try to do is say, hey, don't worry so much about like people clicking on the ad and converting. They're going to say, we're going to show you the benefits of you through conversions. Someone saw your ad and at some point they converted and the ad influenced that conversion. And if we can change the way that people think about that, they will still find our ad format valuable. I would say that Google, if they do that, are now in a war with a greater selection of publishers and they have they less... Are differentiation and they're still in a horrible place in a really let me, tough spot let me let me wrap on this a little bit for you i was talking to some of our marketing friends yesterday kieran john sunil some some folks you know and there was some really interesting things that came up in that discussion one is that intent you know one of the reasons google is so good is it because it captures intent somebody searching yeah. somebody enters a word and that word then matches them with stuff and that they have a high intent for, and they become customers at a much higher rate than most other channels, right? In the world where AI and chat-driven search are much more popular, that intent doesn't go away, right? There's still the same amount of people who are out there wanting to be interested in those things. What happens is, is something like ChatGPT is amazing at capturing the highest intent people. It's not good at capturing people who are like, I don't really know what I want. I'm just trying to do a little research and then maybe I'm gonna stumble upon your thing and then you're gonna convince me through lots of marketing that I want this thing and I have real intent for this thing. You're gonna increase my intent for this thing. And that is a big change and that is going to be a really hard, hard thing for marketers to wrap their head around. And I wanna tell you what I think are some of the implications, Kieran. One of the implications is I think brand marketing is going to move closer to performance marketing. I think you're going to move away from awareness metrics long term and more into a brand's ability to drive intent. And we're going to measure brand's ability to drive intent through these high intent capture channels like search. I think that's going to be very, very different than how, how things work today. I think Google, Microsoft, others are going to get in the intent data selling game. 100%. I think... We are in a world where the percentage of anonymous searches are going to plummet because they need people signed in to train the model and to map their interest and data to the person and to the company so they can sell it, right? Once I have that intent data, which I don't have today as a marketer, I could do all kinds of things, right? I can do way different ad targeting. I could do much better customized Mm. email nurturing campaigns. A lot of things we do today would be way better if they go into that intent data selling game. In fact, Kieran, I'm going to make the craziest prediction I've ever made on this show. If you believe that everybody's going to get back into that intent selling game, you know what's going to come back? Display ads. (laughs) Display ads are going to be important again. If you could do micro-targeted display ads that you can create lots of 
different customized versions of with generative AI, they are going to work. They are going to work. And I cannot believe those words are coming out of my mouth. I hate myself for it. I'm going to take a shower after this, but I think it's true. I do not think it's true because I actually don't think, I think if you created the best display ad, it was a, it was created solely for one person and it hit on everything that that one person wanted. The problem is that users have developed blind spots. So even if you, even if that ad is an incredible ad, you just don't see it. Like it's like the way that we've kind of evolved to just see certain things and not see other things. Like we just don't see those things anymore and unless they are integrated into something in a much different way, right? I think the experience really matters there. So to your point, if you married that intent with a better experience that's new, but I think if you just stick that a better intent in existing display ad slots, it's the problem is like, we just don't see that. We just tune that stuff out. I think that's that we don't know if that's true or not. And the reason we don't know that's true is because I'm going back to the argument you were making that the, that how the web works is going to change. And but Facebook has, web... inc- like, I could create an incredible display ad just for you based on your Facebook profile. Yeah, but you're still, there's still a bunch of guessing on the intent matching side of things. And I, yeah, what I'm saying I is saying that is. that intent matching is going to get 10, 20, 100x better than it is right now. And, I, and I'm saying one of the implications of that is anonymous search might go away, which is a really yeah. crazy and scary thing. So you're saying that all search when you interact with a chat, you're going to be logged, like open AI, so yes. you log in. You're- you have to log in to, for chat GPT right now. I wonder, that's a good point. Like in Bard, do you need to log in or not? Is, like, is it just like an available I don't think we know yet is, yeah. the on- is the honest answer. I think that's interesting. Actually, if they're able to capture the data through login, attach it to your account, then there's pretty, that data is going to be far better data than just even keywords. That would be the most valuable data. And yeah. if you can then, if they can then pipe that back in, imagine if Microsoft could then pipe that data back into LinkedIn. <laughs> well, how like, are Facebook using sick. WhatsApp data then? Like, it's really WhatsApp. It's basically just WhatsApp, but you WhatsApp for the entire no, world. No, because well, because WhatsApp bots. in WhatsApp the chat interactions with other people. It's people. not with a yeah, topic, you're right. right? You're right. And the way the way I want to frame this up for everybody is, you know, people started trying to find stuff based on a word, and then they moved to like a phrase. And now they're going to move to like a more advanced set of instructions, which is kind of what's happening in chat GPT and the changes with Bing search and, and even with Bard. And the next version of that, once you have a logged in experience and you have that feedback loop, the chat is going to help you get better at what to search for. It's already doing right. that, but like it's going to be chat assisted search. And so that means the AI has a real role in driving intent. And one yeah. of the things I believe is that is going to encourage all companies to have much better public available data to feed those AI models. And it's going to, it's going to force individuals and companies to work in public because they want all of their information to be consumed by these models. It, it's like the next version of crawling the web. You are going to want your information included in these models. And if it's not created in public, it's not going to happen. Right. Right. This is so, like mind bending kind of stuff. Like it is a very hard thing for like I think an average marketer, average human to like get their head around the implications of all of this. It's hard right. for me at least. Yeah. So brand performance marketing become much more aligned and changed in yes, many ways. I think so. Intent becomes the gold, like gold of the internet in terms of how you capture and use that. So the other one then is just on the incentives, right? Like yeah, talk to I me don't about think, those. I actually don't think I have a good answer to that because <laughs> I don't either. So why you have a blog? So actually, what, let me just, let me start. I have, let I have, start a, take a, on, I have a take this. on this. Go ahead. Go ahead. But I have a take here. Okay. Actually, the thing I was going to say was what happens when AI becomes a recommendation engine. So I have been playing a lot with it in terms of trying to recommend me different products mm-hmm. and trying to figure out how it recommends products, because that is really like, if I'm using AI and it starts to recommend me things and I don't have to go anywhere else for my mm-hmm. recommendations, then we're all screwed because there's no way to interrupt that person's education or buying cycle because I just go to an enclosed chat interface. I say, mm-hmm. what are the best products to do these things? Your point is you're logged in. And so now that chat bot has all of the information it needs about me, and let's say it can suck in information about my business, well, now it can provide me with like very contextual recommendations on products to use. I have no, I have no way of like, I have no way. First of all, of deciphering mm-hmm. how it's recommended those things to those users. Why my product appears or does not appear. I've asked it to cite its sources. 
I've asked it how it makes recommendations. It's really just like generic, hey, I make recommendations based on popularity, based upon user reviews, which is actually really interesting. It said user reviews because in all the all of the white papers and things I've read, it doesn't have access to user reviews. So I don't know what it means by user reviews. Functional, it said vun- functionality that I mm-hmm. think is applicable to you. That When I started to really think about that, that started to melt my brain because what is marketing? <laughs> my brain has melted so much in the last but 36 mar- hours. Marketing man. is trying to like either educate people it's trying to educate people who don't even know they have a problem, that they have mm-hmm. a problem, and then you're the solution. It's trying to educate people who have a vague notion they have a problem and educating them more in the problem and you're the solution. Or it's trying to just interrupt the buying cycle for people who are looking for a solution. Now, if all of that's done through a closed chat interface, then what do we do, Kip? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, and I, you and I sent some very disparaging WhatsApp yeah, yeah. messages don't to each in, other. Don't put them we in this episode. We were in a bit of despair for a few hours. <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, there's, there's a few things. I, I've got like an endless amount of thoughts here. But a few things I want to share are, again, I think brand marketing becomes exponentially more important. Yeah, I agree. Right? Because driving that intent is going to be huge, huge, huge. The other thing that I think is going to be important is that like, Educational information agnostic of human connection and point of view is going to be commoditized. And I want to explain what I mean by that, which means like you need to have education connected to a person, a creator, and their beliefs and their passion and their personality. Anything that's not, it's going to be commoditized. Not tomorrow, not next month, but in the future, it's going to be commoditized. And because of that, the whole creator movement is going to be bigger than I ever thought. Like I, I thought I was I was bullish on the creator movement, creator economy. It's gonna be way bigger than I ever thought because of the need for when information is commoditized, personality then, and point of view. The personality and the human side of things is how you differentiate. That so is brands, just brands need to have a personality point of view. Brands gonna have a personality point of view. They're gonna have to have creators. They're gonna have to partner with creators. On a, uh, we've been saying this, but this is like taking it up another ten x. It's gonna be very, very different than how most people are thinking about it today. I'll give you my silver lining. Is I think we are going to have to guess less as marketers. Uh, and I'm gonna give you my crazy experiment, Kieran, that I want you to critique and tell me: Am I a crazy person, or would you do it? Okay. Right. On HubSpot.com, or any, let's pick any website, but I work, I run marketing HubSpot, so I'm going to use HubSpot.com. Would you basically Have use OpenAI and, and, and basically feed the model with all of the website information, yeah. <laughs> all customer call recordings, everything that you could ever know about HubSpot in this OpenAI model, and give, let people use a graphical user interface or use a custom chat GPT version of HubSpot.com where they could answer everything. I, I think we should run that experiment. I, I would think run that if you experiment. had a high traffic, if you had a tra- high traffic website, just looking at the prompts people entered on that chat in a period of like 24 hours would blow your mind. I agree. Like I think that intent I think information that's... would literally blow your mind open. Like I think I would have like do analysis with that and I'd be like, I've, I've been doing it all wrong. I'm like, I would think I'd be like, I'm a complete idiot. Right. It's not even just the prompts. Like if you actually had that and plus it had the ability to sign that person up if they wanted to do that through yes. the chat interface, like if, would they use any of the website at all? Oh, and then also what answers were acceptable to them that they, yeah, they yeah. moved on? Oh, like these yeah. are the best answers and they're like hidden on our freaking website. Like what are we doing? We're terrible at this. I like actually being able to feed it with the, not just the website data, but some sort of customer. Yes, da- like that's cu- what I'm saying. Product usage data, customer usage. calls, support right. calls, all of that information would be It's like amazing. your most intelligent sale, salesperson. Like it actually yes. can know, because when you start to grow, you're like, there's just so many different things that sales have to remember. It's actually incredible they, the amount of things that a salesperson has to remember. But you can have an AI bot that knows all this stuff because you just feed it the data. Well, and then you take it one step further. I was plus AI, you, but- minute, plus it can train off your gong yes. calls, so it can yes. actually answer in the language of your sales team. Exactly. And so let's take this one step further. I, like we're going crazy town on today's pod, people, but we're we're, we're getting there. I promise. I WhatsApp you this a little bit. Like, imagine you're a software company and you have a freemium model, product-led growth model. Kieran is one of the best experts of product-led growth out there, for sure. For sure, <laughs> obviously, obviously, but not to, not to not to honk Kieran's horn too much for him. But like, imagine you're interacting with ChatGPT, and instead of just like going and signing up for a free product, 
you have AI, which is what adept.ai is working on, go and set up a version of free software, take all of your data, basically set up basically what you would think of a tradition as like a proof of concept, a real working version of that software for your specific company that you could automatically go and start using like within minutes, not days, weeks, months. Like that would be mind-boggling that will Dude, change we, we talked about a how this that package are, is everywhere yeah we, it's adept I, adept is the company adept. this is adept i adept just want to talk about the most interesting ai company on the planet right I now i think adept AI, is an incredible AI. interest i can't wait to see when they do their raise and and go strength from strength if you work at adept and you want to come on the pod you have an oh yeah actually, to come on you, the pod you, for sure please and just to like go back to my point on having an AI person be your sales person, talk in my book. I invested in a company that are doing just this. So <laughs> shout out to them. Pump in your book. Pump in your book. <laughs> shout out to them. Oh, I'll always be making that money, Karen. Yes. My, like, my brain hurts, man. How do you feel? Uh, you can look at it this way, right? We want to change. We want to, marketers want to change. It. You and I, marketers like, want to change, and we got Clubhouse, <laughs> right? That's the line. <laughs> marketers want to change, and they got fucking Clubhouse. <laughs> and I hate, I hate and, and now now we've got real change. Yes, the change may actually be awful for all of us, but Jesus, <laughs> it's so much more exciting, right? Like, well, look, it's way more interesting. And I think the, I think what we 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 shared some things that are going to be really interesting opportunities for marketers in the future, and. Leading in the creator economy, I think leading into YouTube, like YouTube is going to come out of this undisrupted for quite a while. I honestly believe. I think like, YouTube I think is a phenomenal l- business. Leading into YouTube as a marketer, like we have said that, like we are all in on it for this pod and everything. Like it continues to be more and more true. Like, wow, it is incredible opportunity to build influence and, and demand for your business. So like there are real things that you can go and do, but also know that the, the level of change that is going to happen likely over the next... 24 months is something we haven't experienced in probably 15 years it's the internet i actually don't think it's mobile i think it's the internet i think my hot take to end with is in in that future world there are marketers who know how to use ai and there are marketers looking for a new job (laughs) well and i would say i would say the best marketers are marketers who understand how to use and leverage ai but also understand the human side of marketing oh 100 percent. the storytelling the packaging the intersection of those two skills in the future is where the next generation of great marketing leaders great cmos are going to come from i right. I, I really firmly believe that and where great companies are going to come from i'm exhausted this is an emergency pod kieran and i have been going back and forth on this topic for like two days straight it's like late in the evening we just we appreciate everybody watching and listening and I think we were kind of right about all this. We, we knew this was going to be a big deal, Kieran. We've been talking about it. And I think the announcements of this week show just how quickly this is all moving. I need to go back, actually, watch the prediction show. I can't recall. Which was only like two months ago. Yeah, I can't remember what we said about <laughs> AI. On. But I think we said it would move fast. Like, it's going to, the, the evolution of this thing is going to be far faster than, like, ChatGPT we said, is we fa- said Google would come out with a competitor in like April, and, yeah. and, and it's it, not, it's the first week of February. Already, yeah. This is moving even faster than we thought it was going Just to Just look at the growth rates. Like ChatGPT is 100 million users in two months. The next nearest, I think, was Google that reached that number in like two years or something. And so like the, the evolution of this is just going to be faster than anything we've seen. The fact that 322,000 people were almost at parity of whether they would use Google yeah, with Chat and GPT, would right now, before this week, Google's market share in search was 92% percent 92 percent market share i think the bin big market share was like five or six percent that <laughs> is a crazy shift in perception in like weeks time and that Dang. is the world we're living in we're going to be back with this topic lots of marketing against the grade we appreciate everybody listening leave us questions in the youtube comment of things that you think we missed things you want us to cover on future episodes around this topic we are here for you and we'll see you real soon on marketing against the grain This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better. 